CP students, what's going on, y'all? It is I, Big Vernon, the Nashville campus student pastor. Uh, so excited to talk with y'all today. But real quick, you probably have someone in your life that you just don't get. Maybe it's a friend or a family member, and you just can't figure them out. Maybe th there is one part of them that you just don't understand. And that's okay, because maybe there's something about you they don't get. I have a friend and he hates personality tests. The one that he dislikes the most is the Enneagram. He doesn't like when people judge him based off of his test results. He doesn't like when people put him in a box because of some stupid number he got from a stupid test. And by now, you probably figured out that that friend is me. And it's true. A lot of people don't realize that there is a deep rooted reason that I don't like being put into a box. And that's because there's more to the story. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But today we're going to get real. In church, we talk about a lot of things. Sometimes we'll switch it up and we'll bring in things like football and the Queen Bee Beyonce and et cetera. But if you know me, you know I'm always going to be real with you. And with what we're going to talk about today, as much as I'm real with you, I ask that you look inside of you and be real with not me, but yourself. And I want you to lean in, be as receptive as you can about what we're talking about today. Porn. Yes, I said porn. And let's not act like we haven't heard of it. For some of you even seen it. Some of you have probably probably are asking, why are we having this conversation? And maybe you're one of the few that are absolutely lost when it comes to this. But we can all run into porn in one way or, or another. We aren't just affected by porn. Our culture is actually influenced by it in so many different ways. Did you know that the average exposure to porn is 11 years old? I, I even think that about the time when I was even younger than 11 years old, I was watching the Michael Keaton Batman Returns. And although I'm a nerd, I remember watching and remember it, remembering it mainly because I saw Michelle Pfeiffer in a Catwoman suit. And I'm sure you're watching TV, Hulu, Netflix, even YouTube, and you can find all kinds of references to porn. Even a show that, that is about old style royal British teen drama. You catch some of those references. Uh, the music we listen to. No matter what genre, we see some things. I don't listen to country, but I've heard that even that has some pornographic references. Dig this. Dealing with porn is a preteen thing. It's also a teen thing, but it's also an adult thing. And if you know me, you know I'm no prude. I'm not clean. I'm not pure or a guy that walks around like I'm perfect. Basically, I'm saying that I've been there and done that. And I'm not saying that I have done a lot of things and I deserve a trophy. I'm saying it because I'm telling you how porn made me see things differently. Or we can say they didn't let me see things or even people the way that they are. Basically, I'm saying that porn never tells the whole story. As I watched porn, I thought maybe it would make me better at sex. I even thought that it would make sex better for me. And the worst part of it, in a lot of cases when I, when I was single, I saw the way that I treated women was not the best, all because I based a lot of that from porn. <laughs> Remember when I said that it influences our culture? Unless you're actually living in a bunker with no Wi-Fi and not even a stack of People magazine, we are all influenced by it. It's all around us. So before we dig deep into it, let's pinpoint what porn is. It is sexualized content designed to get a specific response. Now, the way I really got into porn was simply through curiosity. And I thought I was learning something because, hey, they are being filmed, so something about it has to be right, right? Dig this, y'all. We're being influenced by something that is giving us a fake education. We as sound, soft-brained humans are more than capable of deciphering what is legit and what isn't. We have to understand that there is more to the story. When we scroll on our Instagram, we know the underlying premise of an OnlyFans account. Or, let's be real, a bus it challenge. Guys, when you stare at girls in yoga pants, you know what you're doing. And girls, when you stare at guys in sweatpants, you know what you're doing. And a lot of times, 
we would hear someone say, oh, it's just innocent temptation or boys will be boys and so many other excuses. But at the end of the day, we are all influenced by everything in some type of way. And we just aren't seeing the whole story. Now, if you've been in church or around church for a while and you've probably heard about the book of Proverbs from the Bible. And some people say that the book of Proverbs is a set of rules or a set of things to do and not do. But Proverbs is really a book of poetry that is primarily about wisdom. And if you don't know what wisdom is, it is simply truth that makes your life better. And these truths or Proverbs were written by an ancient king named Solomon, who was greatly known to be wise. Now, you're probably wondering, how would an ancient king know how fine the girls are on Instagram? or how handsome Harry Styles is. And he's, he's pretty handsome. But a lot of things that Proverbs touches on is relevant to this day. To start, we're gonna read from Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15. It says, the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. Now let's break that verse down a bit. It starts with the simple. And all that is saying that a person that is considered to be simple is someone that is not necessarily the smartest person. <laughs> Nowadays, we call them a simp. And when it comes to porn, some of you think that it's not hurting anyone or you just looked or you aren't really having sex, so it's cool. But know that truthfully, porn is often responsible for less sexual and relationship satisfaction. Porn makes violence look sexy. Sex in porn is often real unrealistic. And it even makes us think that marriage is sexually confining. And for me, looking back on it, I see how much of a simp I was. I seriously thought that porn would make me better at sex. I would watch it and think about sex looking like the way it does in front of a camera. I was so wrong. I thought porn would make me enjoy sex more. My simple mindedness thought that if I watched it, it would be even more enjoyable with the women that I had sex with. And it didn't. And porn will not help you know what sex is like. Even before I ever had sex, watching porn made me imagine what it would be like. And when I actually did, I saw the damage later that created. And listen, God is not against porn because sex is bad. Sex is not bad. God is against porn because it does not portray what he intended it to be. He is against porn because it devalues us. God is a hundred percent loving God and there's absolutely nothing loving about pornography. I'm going to say that again. God is a 100% loving God and there's absolutely nothing loving about pornography. The other part of Proverbs chapter 14 verses 15 at the end, it says the prudent give thoughts to their steps. Now in our culture, a prude is someone seen as pure, clean cut, uh, looked at as a good uh, do-gooder or someone that is just lame <laughs> but that's not the case the definition of prudent is acting with or showing care and thought for the future so when it comes to this verse saying the prudent give thoughts to their steps it simply means this that a person evaluates the situation carefully before they fall into a trap and that's exactly what porn is a trap it wants to take so much from you your time your money, your attention, your addiction. And our culture doesn't say that because we are so blinded by what is perceived to be good, but a prudent person is a wise person. Another wise brother in the Bible, my favorite, Paul, wrote one of my favorite letters slash books ever that became part of the New Testament. It's called the book of Ephesians. And we're gonna jump in Ephesians chapter five, verses 15. Paul wrote, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So, so think, y'all, with Paul saying, be very careful, and Solomon saying, give thought to your steps, understand that porn never tells the whole story. Don't be a simp and let something like porn deteriorate your heart. Both of these wise men are giving us practical steps into being wise and understanding that everything that is accessible to you is not for you. And also to look through things and know that there is always more. Let me give you some practical, practical ways to not give into porn and everything that comes with it. Number one, 
Train your brain. Refuse to be fooled. Turn away from it. Whenever you're scrolling down Instagram and you see that fine model that you thought you stopped following, but they showed up on your search feed, I know it happens. Ask yourself, what is this even doing for me? Or do I want to waste time staring at pictures scrolling with no satisfaction as an end result? <laughs> you're smart, y'all. You, you're kind and you're important. You can see through things to know that they are fake. Porn is everywhere and it wants to take something from you. You're smart enough to know that it is manipulative, so don't let it take anything from you. And number two, refuse to participate. Make a plan for yourself. Set yourself up for when you are faced with pornographic content. How will you stop uh, the manipulation? Help yourself get unmanipulated. And, and let's be real. Maybe you need to take action and limit your access to social media. Listen, the porn industry makes $12 billion a year. So according to their standards, all of the manipulating and everything that they are doing is working. Don't contribute to that. Don't fall in that trap. So if you're struggling with it, curious about it, or just lost in it all and don't want any part of it, talk to a trusted adult or a small group leader and be real with them. Take those action steps. But remember, you can't do this by yourself. Let's pray. Father God, um, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your grace that you've had on me throughout the years, throughout those times when I was not focused on you. And God, I pray for all of our students. I pray that no matter what they're going through, I pray that they're focused on you, Lord. And we pray against those distractions, those things that keep our eyes closed or keep our eyes in a disarray, Lord. So I just pray for your reverence. We pray for your presence in it all. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. I'll see y'all in small group.